Pack would just give me the go ahead that it is that we are live, please. Thank you. Okay, at 531, I will open tonight's meeting. Uh, in accordance with the requirements of the open meeting law, please be advised that this meeting is being recorded and broadcast over the Lunenburg Public Access Channel. The town of Lunenburg, in response to the COVID-19 coronavirus, is currently following the guidance from the Lunenburg Board of Health, Massachusetts Department of Public Health, and the CDC regarding the virus and step community, steps communities can take to prevent the spread of all town and all and all town facilities thus are closed to the public. In accordance with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 30A, section 20, all public meetings are being conducted remotely. This meeting will be recorded. Uh, I guess I should, is this being recorded, Heather? Yes. Okay. And you'll be able to be uh, find this once it is uh, finalized and after the meeting is over, you can find that on the Lunenburg Access YouTube channel within 48 hours. The following information is provided for members of the public that would like to uh, remote into this meeting. Uh, to remotely participate from a computer, please use the link below. That link is https colon slash slash zoom dot us slash j slash nine zero nine one seven four zero three four four seven or from a telephone dial a toll-free number eight 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 four seven five four four nine nine and enter the webinar id nine zero nine one seven four zero three four seven hash if you have not registered with zoom you'll be asked for your name and your email address note that no participant id is needed just press pound when asked and telephone users may dial star nine to request to speak after joining the meeting. Uh, computer and app users may use the raise hand feature to request to speak. Uh, I will identify myself. I am Tom Alonzo, chair of the board of selectmen. I will call a roll call of all the members of the board uh, who are on here and ask them to identify themselves uh, or say I when I call your name. And uh, I will do the same for anybody who's expected to speak, in this case, the town manager and town council. There are only two current business items on the agenda. Uh, there is not anticipated to be any public comment, but if somebody raises their hand, if it is a simple question, I will entertain the idea so but there's no section for public comment uh, although i may take comments as we discuss the items so first let's go around the room so i have identified myself uh we'll go to the vice chair phyllis luck Can you yes hear i'm here okay then let's go to uh the clerk damon mcquaid yep i'm here and Select board member Katie Adams. Here. And select board member Michael Ray Jeffries, who's on phone with us. You have to unmute him. I did unmute him. Okay. Can you hear us, Michael? Yes, I'm here. And I'm going to, for the people at home, I'm going to type in his name so it comes up. Okay. Um, town, Madam Town Manager, are you here? Yes. And Adam Kassar, our Town Council, are you here? I am. Excellent. All right. So we will get to item number one on the agenda, which is vote to postpone the annual town election, the postponement date to be determined at a regu at the regular selectmen's meeting on this Tuesday, March 31st, 2020. I will hand it to the town manager to explain and town council to explain. Thank you, Chair. Um, so up until yesterday, it was understood that when the new annual town election date was, um, the vote was taken, which 
is expected to happen Tuesday, this coming Tuesday by the board, that it would reset the clock for the other items such as town caucus and when nomination papers would be submitted. Um, Attorney Council happened to speak with some of the, someone at the Secretary of State's office yesterday and received um, different information. That's why we asked to call a meeting today. So I'll let Attorney Costa explain from here. Uh, thank you, Heather, and, and through you, Mr. Chairman. So uh, what was just said is correct. Uh, we had a brief conversational recall at your meeting on Tuesday about the uh, potential for rescheduling the election to a later date. Uh, that was not decided at your meeting on Tuesday. Uh, that same day, there had been special legislation that was adopted and signed by the governor that authorized of elections with um, unfortunates needed address postponement of the election. It also addressed things like the use of the ballots. It Did not is not the general in the market because of your talk in some one provides for a 35 day deadline for the submittal of those nomination papers to the town clerk 35 days prior to the date of the election, and then there's a second deadline. 14 days further back from the election for purposes of submitting those papers to the Board of Registrars to confirm that they're acceptable. So it's really 35 days plus an additional 14 days for a total of 49 days. And so the presumption was that this, the, the legislature and those who drafted the legislation purposely didn't address the issue of nomination papers because there was no need to address it. Because if you chose as a community to postpone your election to a later date, you'd simply count 49 days back from that later date, and that would be the latest date on which nomination papers could be submitted. Um, what has come to light as recently as late Thursday, and then again on Friday in a conversation that I had with Michelle Tassinari, who is lead general counsel for the elections division as a, at the Secretary of the Commonwealth's office, is that the position of the elections division is that the deadline for nomination papers does not change. Um, I tend to disagree with that position. I had a lengthy conversation with Attorney Tassinari. Uh, I appreciate that she has had a direct role in the submittal of the legislation and the adoption of the legislation, um, the special legislation. But my position is that the general laws speak for themselves. But the election division's position is that they don't. Its position is that your deadline for nomination papers remains whatever it was, whatever it is, based upon the current date the current election date, and that if as a community you choose to postpone and to reschedule your election date, that's all well and good, and you have the authority to do that under the new special legislation, but that it would have no effect on the deadline for nomination papers. And so what that means, based upon conversations I've had with Kathy, your town clerk, and our calculation of the deadline counting back from your current election date of May 16th, is that the deadline for nomination papers was going to be and currently is today, which by virtue of today being a Saturday is extended until close of business on Monday. But that explains the, the rationale for today's meeting and the urgency and the emergency nature of the meeting. I had a conversation and a couple of conversations with uh, yesterday uh, and we understood that the deadline being tomorrow if the town chooses to postpone the election, an option that it has in one of our communities is already the extra nomination papers to vote to extend or to postpone the election. And then concurrently with that, as soon as Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week, we would make a filing uh, with an appropriate court, likely Worcester Superior Court, and would seek a court order allowing for a later date 
for submittal of nomination papers. That is, if that's what the selectmen decide. You don't have to do that. You could decide as a board that you want to allow Monday's deadline to stand. That would be consistent with the position of the elections division. But if the desire is to extend the deadline for nomination papers based upon a new election date, you would need to get authority to do that, at least in the eyes of the elections division. I suppose, and one thing I discussed with, with Tom and Heather, I suppose you could take the position that you're going to rely upon my advice and me telling you that I think a strong argument can be made that the elections division is wrong and that the legislation speaks for itself in conjunction with mass general laws. But that would be a position that would be inconsistent with what we're being told uh, uh, that the election division be believes. So my recommendation, again, to Tom and to Heather was in the event that there's a desire on the part of the board to extend the deadline for nomination papers, the best way to accomplish that would be to vote today or prior to the close of business on Monday to postpone the election and then to seek special legislation, excuse me, to seek a court order next week, uh, allowing for a later deadline to be set. We did this for the town of Hanson on Thursday, and we received word Friday uh, that the court, uh, the judge allowed the order um, establishing a new date, a new deadline for nomination papers. So I hope that, I hope that makes sense. I've tried to walk through it step by step, but that's the purpose of uh, today's emergency meeting. Tom, you're muted. Thank you. So I'm going to go through the board members individually, see if they have questions. Uh, I'm just going to go in the order I see them on my list here. So uh, Mrs. Adams. Um, I would say that I would support extending the deadline because town hall's been closed with social distancing. I don't even know if collecting signatures is appropriate. So I think applying more time to it just makes sense. Okay. Uh, Mr. Jeffries. Yeah, I think I, I understand. I understand the position of town council and that, and I hear what Selectman Adams said, and I agree in sentiment that it would be helpful to extend, uh, this deadline, but I really, I question if we have the opportunity to go through our legislature, um, even if the deadline is tomorrow, that if there's something that they can do after the fact, to resolve this. I mean, they, you know, they acted pretty quick with the last request to push off the date for the election. And uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm hesitant when it comes to asking courts to do what we haven't yet asked our legislature to do. I will say, uh, first of all, from the agenda, we have two separate issues. So the, the court order is gonna be the next item the first one is on the postponement of the town election, which I believe, if I, unless I misunderstood everybody, I think everybody's in agreement that we're going to postpone the election from when it was, which was the third week in May, to some other future date. Uh, and that's what the first discussion is. Then what to do about the nomination papers will we'll take up in the second agenda item. And that involves the court order that you just referenced and that town council also referenced. So it is two parts that we're doing first, you know, in, in that order, just so you understand and everybody at home understands. Mrs. Luck. Um, it seems that um, as attorney Costa mentioned, the town of Hanson was able to do it rather quickly. You know, I, it doesn't seem like that big a deal. Postponing the election, I think is appropriate. And I think his suggestion for the court order is also appropriate. Mr. McQuaid. Yeah, I'm all for extending both. I mean, we have hard enough time getting volunteers as it is to narrow the window and he just doesn't make sense. Um, so yes, I would, I would extend both. All right. I don't know if anybody, I will give people the opportunity if you if you are on and you want to raise your hand if you're on the public i will give the opportunity for people to comment uh, if they have one otherwise we will go on to uh, a vote i see no raised hands again it is the raise hand function if you're on zoom with video so um, all right so 
I would entertain a motion regarding postponing the town election until a date certain that we will pick take up on our uh, Tuesday night meeting, the actual date. But as of right now, it would be just to postpone it from its current uh, proposed date, which I don't have in front of me. What is the proposed date right now? It's the 16th, May 16th, right? Yes. yes. So postpone it from the scheduled May 16th date. So moved. We'll have a second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor is a roll call vote. So Mrs. Luck. Aye. Mr. McQuaid. Aye. Mrs. Adams. Aye. Mr. Jeffries. Aye. And an aye for myself. So it is hereby postponed. Uh, now we can go on to agenda item two, which is the discussion to authorize council to seek a court order to extend the deadline to submit nomination papers. Uh, I would en enter my my comments here that I think uh, I think the either way we go, I don't think it matters particularly. I mean, I think we're probably safer going with a court order that we could say we did it, but. Uh, as attorney Costa pointed out in the, in the general laws, the nomination papers are calculated from the election date. So we can use that either way. I don't think it matters if we want to be ultra safe, we can do it, but whichever way we do it, I think logically we need to extend the nomination papers time. There's no way anybody's going to want to sign anything given the current conditions uh, and risk public health and safety issues just to get somebody on a, a ballot in town election. We should try to see things. I'm not even sure extending it is that we're going to have a large participation, but we'll have a, a greater chance of participation uh, at that point than we will now. So I am for the, the court order uh, and uh, Mrs. Adams. I'm sure I have a question for um, attorney Costa in terms of people are looking for alternative ways to collect signatures, like if, you know, gathering emails or something, I'm just thinking it's just a confusing time. And I, I just don't know if anybody's going to get comfortable enough to go around and collect their signatures. Is any community looking at an alternative? Through you, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, so, um, Slocum Adam, so uh, I think the answer is, um, Yes, that, that certainly candidates are doing what they can to think outside the box, so to speak, and find ways to gather signatures while also respecting the, the social distancing protocols. What actually prompted the discussion we're having today and the issue concerning nomination papers was a conversation that I had with Heather and Tom yesterday um, about um, potentially finding a different way for submittal of nomination papers versus the more traditional manner. Uh, whether there could be a check the box approach or uh, submittal en masse to the town clerk who could then assemble signatures. Um, I will tell you that, um, unfortunately, while I, I respect all the hard work by the, the elections division and by the legislature to try to address all of the various COVID-19 issues that have arisen over a very short period of time, um, the election division is taking a very stringent position with regard to uh, compliance with mass general laws for the submittal of nomination papers. In my conversation with attorney Tessinari yesterday, I talked with her about these alternative approaches and uh, she was not very receptive, quite frankly, to any of them. Um, she appreciates the current environment. She indicated, for example, that she has a, a friend or a colleague who uh, is running for a local office and she saw uh, on Facebook the day prior that he had, you know, put out a Facebook blast saying that he was leaving you know, uh, a, a table um, by the sidewalk in front of his home with one bowl of pens, you know, take uh, 200 pens, take a pen, sign the sheet, and then keep the pen. <laughs> um, and that the table would be out there for four hours the following day in an effort to get people out there to sign his nomination papers without having to interact and without having to touch the same pen and the same paper that everybody else was touching. So there are certainly ways to have it done she and I joked a little bit about having, you know, the equivalent of a, a farmer's market where you had all, uh, <laughs> all, the, all, all the various no, uh, uh, candidates uh, seeking nominations, putting tables out along, outside the, you know, <laughs> along the local common and um, inviting people to come and they could go table to table with the same pen and sign nomination papers and then take the pen with them. So 
there are certainly ways to do this. There is a, 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 the ability to use this outside the box thinking. Um, but in terms of the actual physical submittal, finding a different form or a different manner, um, her position is that the traditional form is what's been accepted. It's what's con what is consistent with mass general laws. And she was not inclined to support um, you know, any alternative uh, manner of submitting the nomination papers to the town clerk. And she's fully aware of the situation of the COVID-19. She hasn't been living in some dome somewhere, right? <laughs> I, I can't speak to that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Jeffries, you had a question. Yes, uh, I have a question for Attorney Costa. <clears throat> As you were just mentioning about the alternatives to get signatures, you know, the same, same si similar situation occurred earlier today with someone um, trying to get nomination papers. What I'm wondering is, you know, if in a couple of months from now, in, in June, if the situation isn't much better, you know, we're going to be looking for to our legislature to decide how else we can go about having an election. So that way, you know, everyone's not showing up at one location, you know, thousands of people. Um, I think that there is a question. So my question is, what is the harm if, you know, people are not able to submit their papers tomorrow? We recognize that on Tuesday um, and then we follow court order. Uh, we uh, reach out to our representatives to try to get some legislation, uh, and then let's say next week we vote to follow court order to get an extension. What's the harm in delaying a week? Uh, again, through you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I, I don't know that there is any harm. Um, the two alternatives that always exist, and I feel like I've discussed them not only with your board before, but with many others over the past two and a half or so weeks, the two ways in which we can find solutions to many problems that have arisen where we're, where we're bound by what mass general laws provide for is either through special legislation or by way of a court order. And special legislation, I would agree with you, is generally preferred. Um, it's preferred because it doesn't require us to um, go before a judge in what is meant to be a more adversarial setting and seek, uh, number one, put the judge in the position where he or she has to issue an order particular to our circumstances, potentially treating us differently than other communities or putting them in a position where they would also need to seek court orders. Um, and, and number two, there's no certainty with respect to seeking court orders. If you get a judge that isn't persuaded um, that what you want to do is appropriate, that judge may, may be reticent to, to sign the order. So there is a risk involved. Um, the reason that some communities have opted for pursuing court orders in lieu of special legislation is um, because special legislation has not been quick to materialize in some context. So while relatively speaking, many, uh, many uh, bills have been adopted over the course of the past two weeks in a much quicker fashion than we're used to, to address uh, the current pandemic, um, it's still been slow. Um, Heather and I had probably no fewer than you know, six or seven conversations uh, in the days before we got the special legislation that postponed the special election that was supposed to occur uh, on March 31st. And um, we had conversations about whether there'd be a need to, to pursue a court order. Um, we were uncertain. In fact, in conversations I had with Michelle Tassinari, the same person I spoke to on Friday regarding the, the issue that's now before you, when I talked to her about the special election and made all the arguments why, you know, sending out uh, poll, uh, 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 poll workers, you know, 75 to 85 percent of which were in the highest risk category was was uh, not prudent. When I had conversations with her about sending individuals to the polls um, in close who would be in, in close proximity to one another, why that wasn't prudent, you know, her responses to me were that there have been other elections that have occurred in other parts of the country uh, over the course of the past couple of weeks. Uh, her response to me is that there were ways to maintain social distancing, you know, even even while conducting an election. So, you know, in the end, we, we, we got what we wanted, which was special legislation to address the issue. But I think that some communities are concerned that it might not happen, that it might not happen in two or three days. It might not happen in a week. It might not happen in a week and a half. But it is an option if there's a general preference um, amongst your board to pursue special legislation and to not seek a court order until um, that avenue has been exhausted, that is certainly an alternative. Um, I would think that based upon the speed with which the legislature has been addressing the majority of these bills that have come before it, 
um, you're probably looking at a minimum of, of a week between um, the date that we crafted and submitted to our legislature to be put, our legislator to be put before the legislature uh, in the date that we, we would uh, potentially, you know, receive action, you know, House, Senate, Governor. You're looking at probably a minimum of a week. I have a follow-up. So, you know, we're not in a unique situation as a town. I mean, everyone across the state is in the same situation we're in. Um, and just so I'm clear, we have not asked yet uh, the our delegates in the state house to do anything about this. Am I correct about that? That's correct. All right. Well, I would urge that we would <clears throat> attempt that route first. Um, and then, you know, in a week from now, if, if the situation is different and they're not able to come mm -hmm. to a resolution or this isn't something that they see as being important, I certainly support extending the deadline out. Um, but I also, I, I think it's really important to go through the, to use the people that we have in these positions, our elected officials, before we turn to courts to do things for matters of expedience. Um, so that's, that's my position on this. So let me just address, again, I think in terms of the election itself and the mechanisms with which to hold an election, we have time because now that we've delayed it and it's probably, I think everybody on this call is probably not gonna put it before, you know, middle of June anyway, we have time to address how we might do the election. This, this is just about nomination papers and, uh, and extending that, which I think is prudent and logical both. Uh, I will say that the safety net underneath all this, if, if we can't get people to, even with the extension, if we are granted one, can't get people to do nomination papers, you know, the ultimate point of the election is fairness. And that means all the candidates or potential candidates would be under the same guidelines and the same rules. And at the very worst case, we may have a completely write in election. I mean, it's not the best way to do it, but I mean, that, that may be what we're left with. And if that's true, that that's what we have, then everybody's in the same boat. Every candidate would be at the same advantage or disadvantage. And I think at the end, that's probably the best we can, we can hope for. Mrs. Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, sure, Mr. Costa first. I, I just like to add a, uh, add something that I didn't say before because it's a it's a, a, a logistical reality. Um, so certainly one option would be to pursue special legislation, and then if unsuccessful or if the board believes it is taking too long, to then pursue a court order. Um, what that probably means is we wouldn't be pursuing a court order for a period of a week, a week and a half, maybe two weeks. Um, we're not talking about a lengthy extension here. We don't know exactly how long because you haven't chosen as a board the new election date. And presumably what we would be seeking either through special legislation or in the form of a court order would be a deadline for nomination papers that is counted 49 days back from whatever that date is. But, you know, let's say, for example, that you chose June 2nd as the date, which is the date of the special state election. If we count 49 days back from June 2nd, you're looking at mid-April and we're virtually at April 1st already. What's April 1st? Wednesday? Wednesday. So uh, I just want to be clear that the challenge becomes anybody who might submit nomination papers on Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday while we're pursuing special legislation but haven't yet pursued a court order or even into the following week once we begin to pursue a court order and forever however long it takes before the court acts um, there is some uncertainty as to whether individuals should be attempting to get signatures, attempting to submit nomination papers, because it may all be ultimately for naught, because we don't have that same sense of surety that we would have if we, for example, sought a court order on Monday and got it on Tuesday. Mrs. Adams. Okay, sure. I just wanted to make a motion that we um, extend the deadline for nomination papers. Um, according to the date of the chosen new election with possible special legislation, but with the option to do a court order if necessary. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, we have a second from Michael Ray Jeffries. Now um, I have a question. I have a question. Yes. Um, there this may be people, 
there may be people who are ready to submit nomination papers on Monday. What will happen to them? What will happen to those nomination papers if they're submitted? Well, if you if you submit them now, I mean, you can submit them before the deadline. There's no, you can just file them with the town clerk and they would be accepted for the election. All right, so if pe people have gone through the trouble and have got them, they submit them on Monday and they're all set. That would be correct, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, my position, my for the rest of the board, my personal opinion is that uh, I certainly agree with the motion that we should uh, extend it. I think, uh, as is is one of the opinions of, of town council, that uh, nomination paper is being determined, the deadline for submitting nominations being determined from the election day. I think that by us postponing it, it already, in my mind, is already calculated back to whatever that date is once we set the actual election date. So I'm fine with that, but I don't see any harm uh, in issuing a court order to get that decided as well. And I would really, uh, I would, I would not want to go the special legislation route because of the timeline that we're talking about. As Mr. Costa said, we don't know when we're doing it, the, the election, but if it was the same date, which is what the town clerk wants on June 2nd, we're only looking at two weeks. We, we wouldn't be able to get something to the, our legislative team and them getting in front of the, the legislature in that kind of time frame, to me. So I, I agree I, with your position. Yeah, so I think we I would say let's we, we we lose nothing by going with a court order. And is there? Let me just ask this. Of course, it's a practical question. Is there any cost assumed by the town in asking for a court order? So there'd be there'd be a filing fee with the court. Uh, we file a verified complaint and we'd seek injunctive relief. So there'd be a filing fee with the complaint, which I think is roughly $275. And then there'd be a $90 uh, payment, presuming that preliminary relief issued. So there'd be a cost of approximately $400, but the actual preparation of the documentation, um, me arguing it to the extent that I have to do so telephonically or otherwise, that's all within the the um, the, the town's flat oh. fee. So there's no additional cost for the for the litigation. So to me, with that with that budget item, I think it's money well spent, and we get ourselves protected uh, in two ways. Again, we make the assumption that we're using the 49 day dead, uh, deadline as pursuant to Mass General Law, and we do the court order just in case somebody decides at the elections department that, uh, that they want to challenge this. So, I mean, I'd be for that. I don't, I'm not exactly sure if the motion stated that because the motion mentioned special legislation. So I'll ask the person who motioned if you could clarify that what I summarized is what you moved. Um, yes, I think what I was intending is just a spe special legislation happens, that's fine. But the motion is to change the deadline and make it possible to do the court order. Thank I mean, there's always the possibility that legislation would come, um, but I think, yes, I, we could almost remove that from it. So it's changed the deadline and allow the court order. Okay. Michael Ray, do you uh, continue your second with that clarification? Michael? Sorry, I was on mute. I withdraw my second, but I do have a question. Well, I don't want you to withdraw it. I want you to confirm it with the clarification that, that Mrs. Adams just made. I this I understand what Mrs. Adams just, just stated. Yep. So I'm withdrawing my second. Okay. So is anybody else second? What I'll second. Okay. And you have a question, you said, Mr. Jeffries. Yes. So we can um can we make a decision today to go with the interpretation it sounds like we all agree with town council's interpretation of what mass general law is you know when we had this conversation the other day about pushing the deadline back uh, pushing the election back i think we all had the same understanding that um that the deadline for people turning their papers was, was going to move with it so if we just say that we don't, can we or, or do we have the ability to just keep accepting nomination papers, you know, for another two weeks, and in the meantime, um, you know, request special as legislation or follow court order that says, look, we we accepted them for a couple more weeks because we had a different interpretation, uh, or we had this interpretation of what was done 
do the special legislation. So, you know, we need a court order to verify that. I, I guess I'm just saying that process-wise, I agree with, with the overall end state of giving everyone in town more time to be able to go about trying to get their nomination papers in. But I think that there's another question here of how are people going to get nomination papers in? And does there need to be legislation that makes other, makes, uh, other opportunities, maybe waives some of these signature requirements? Um, that way people can get less signatures. You know, I think that there's other questions that could potentially be answered by special legislation. So I would just you know, like to see what our legislators have to say before we follow court order. Now, you, I, I, would, I would just comment that they're not mutually exclusive. If we issue, if we ask for a court order to extend it, just to clarify our position, and the, and the, the legislature comes up with different legislation uh, if we ask for it, they're, they certainly could do that, and then any special legislation we would be subject to, and we could avail ourselves of that. There's, they're not they're not competitive uh, or competing options, I don't think. Okay, uh, I think we have somebody from the uh, public, and I'm apt to because. Uh, because of that, I'm apt to the situation. I'm apt to call on them. So, uh, I think Mr. Beardmore. So, Mr. Beardmore, when I unmute you, please identify yourself, or you unmute yourself. Please identify yourself and your street address, like normal public comment, and then make the comment. Hey, good evening. Can you hear me? We can. Peter Beardmore, 282 Pleasant Street. I think we need to be um, cognizant of what's fair to potential candidates here. Um, Clearly the rules need to change because of the pandemic and what's going on and to make elections safe. But for people who have advanced their candidacy and wish to be put on a ballot, the rules are made clear a month or two ago as to what's required to get their names on a ballot. Two weeks ago, those rules changed slightly in terms of what's needed um, in terms of access to town hall, to draw nomination papers, to submit those nomination papers. There was nothing secretive about that. Um, and the deadline is Monday. And in the interest of fairness, I think that the deadline should be Monday. And for anything beyond Monday, I think that there's opportunity for write-ins um, that's available until the point that the ballots are actually cast, whatever date that might be. Um, but in the interest of fairness for candidates who have followed the rules up until this date, um, I don't think that we should be changing the dates. And um, I don't think that, that uh, democracy is underserved by doing that. And I think that we should stick to it. And if uh, new candidates come around in the next uh, week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, then um, there's, a, there's an opportunity for write-in ballots and we should pursue, and they should pursue that option. Okay, thank you. I would say to the comment that I, I well, I think I clearly don't agree because, I, I, and the part I don't agree with is I don't think that that's democracy, that I don't think fairness is compromised if we extend the date for everyone. Uh, the, we're moving out the whole election. We're moving out everything. Everything has been turned into, uh, you know, a tailspin of normal processes. And I think the ability to comply or the necessity to comply with public safety uh, and public health safety certainly would preclude anybody going out and trying to meet the deadline for the signatures. And so I don't, don't see how anybody is put at a competitive disadvantage. This is my viewpoint. Uh, if we extend it, if those people got it, I don't even know how many people, if, I mean, maybe there are people who have submitted the town clerk is not on the call here. And I don't know if anybody has submitted anything, but I don't see how anybody getting their names on the ballot, uh, because they weren't able to get nomination papers that now may be able to, I'm not even sure if they could, but may be able to, uh, I don't think that that's an unfair process, uh, myself. So through you, Mr. Chairman, um, to the town manager because the town clerk is not on the uh, call. Um, have there been any uh, complaints or concerns registered to the town about access to nomination papers at this point? 
Mr. Chair. I, yes, there have been. I've received at least three emails from concerned uh, people who are trying to submit nomination papers and um, meeting. I talked to one who was running for, she's rerunning for an office. Um, she was trying to get nomination signatures at the post office. And she said, you would have thought I had the plague. Like she, you know, people were, uh, didn't want to sign papers given the current situation. Okay, but to be clear, she has nomination papers. She's unable to get the signatures, which I recognize the fact that that's a, that's a fair point given the current circumstances. And maybe that will change over the course of the next four to six weeks. But she has access to the papers. My concern is access to the papers and the ability to submit those papers. Mr. Chair, if I may have had my hand raised for a bit on. on the wait, 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 wait. I, hold on, hold on. So I don't understand, Mr. Beardmore, I don't understand your point. Why are you asking, have people had, a, uh, had, had there been problems getting the nomination papers themselves? Yes, my, my question is, has there been any impedance to the process as it has existed until today, beyond the fact that town hall is closed? Has anybody not been able to overcome that impedance? I am unaware of any situation where people have not been able to get papers. I can't say in the affirmative or. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't believe that the issue has been from anybody I've seen, whether formal channels or informal social media channels, that it was the problem with getting the papers. It was getting the signatures on the papers that has been the obstacle. And, and how is how is a court order how does that resolve that problem it resolves the deadline right now the deadline is tomorrow but the person who is concerned that you know if they put a pen of piece of paper out there they go get signatures that you know they're going to put themselves at harm which is an understandable concern that even if this deadline is pushed out two more weeks it, it if it, we're in the same position in two weeks from now we're in today it, this, the court order doesn't resolve that. Whereas it sounds like these are reasons why we need legislation that maybe in this unique situation, um, there should be other ways to, for people to perhaps, you know, be able to send an email or, or verify who they are to be able to, to electronically, you know, nominate someone. You I know, it seems I'll, like we... I'm sorry, Mr. Jeffries. I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. I, I think I'm finished. I was I, I outlined one option that and that's what attorney Costa and, and Madam town manager were uh, on the call with me. I outlined an option that I thought would have been feasible. I'm not going to review the whole option here, but it was clear from attorney Costa's discussion with the, you know, with the state election board that they had no interest in any of this. So uh, in the interim, we can go for special legislation about other methods of obtaining it. That's a different thing than extending the nomination paper submission deadline. Again- And we have a motion on the floor. Yeah, I mean, I know, I, and I haven't forgotten. So I just haven't taken a vote on it yet, but uh, I just want to be clear again, again that the inability for people to get things signed and for the elections department to agree that any alternative method is not going to be accepted by them we're not going to solve, there's not even a court order is going to solve that. The court order is just to establish the new deadline for, to be basically in line with the whatever election date we choose. That's what we're trying to do. Thank I can't make, on we'll go and sign them. I can't make electronic methods uh, work. Uh, let's go to some questions here from Mr. The Chair, if I may, I've had my virtual hand raised for about 10 minutes. I just wanted to uh, make a comment from a, a previous public comment. Sure. Okay. First of all, more generally speaking, and um, we could sit here and debate all of this because there's no right answer because none of this has ever happened before. So debating it right now, it's impossible. You can't be consistent with something that has never occurred before. In terms of the uh, response to the public commenter, in terms of everything being normal and being unfair to the people who've gone through the process, 
I'd have to just say we didn't even have a town caucus. So this most certainly is not normal. We don't have a single caucus nominee. And so we can't say that people were able to go through the normal process mm -hmm. when, when we haven't even had a town caucus. Um, so everything is abnormal from beginning to end. Um, and town hall was closed. So we don't know how, who or, or how people tried to engage. So it's also impossible to say that anything was, was or was not affected. Cause we, I mean, unless we went through security footage and tried to deduce what people were doing when they tried to get into the locked doors. So I think we are overanalyzing it. I think we just have to do what, um, move everything in the direction of the fact that everything's being moved around, you know, kids aren't in school, everything's crazy. So, de I mean, debating all of this, it, it, there's never going to be a point where we're all settled. So I think, I think we should just, um, rather than get philosophical and spend hours on this meeting tonight, um, and I'm just advocating because I have supper in the oven, um, <laughs> that we focus on the motion and the fact that we're never going to come to the um, conclusion that makes the most sense. And we, and so that's just, I just urge us to focus on the motion and um, okay, thank you. eat dinner. Mr. Thanks. Mr. McQuaid. Yeah, I would agree with Mrs. Adams that we're overanalyzing this. I think the function of extending the election date by the national law sounds like the deadline for papers should also just automatically get drawn out as well. Um, I think we should be going for uh, uh, the determination just so, so to make sure we're doing anything above, above water. I would hope that the special legislation would come through just because you know they should do that on their own anyway. We can seek it out, but uh, I wouldn't sit around waiting for it. I think we are. I think the deadline's already been extended, and we're just you know should go with that. Get the special determination from the judge to agree with us to make sure we're doing it right. So there's no question. But I, I don't think there's any reason not to extend it. I think it already is extended. All right, I will. Uh take up the motion that has been seconded. The motion is to uh, extend the nomination papers uh, and also to authorize town council after the final date of uh, the town election is set to issue a court order seeking uh, to recognize that new deadline date for nomination papers. Uh, this will be a roll call vote, of course. So, Mrs. Luck. Aye. Mr. McQuaid. Aye. Mrs. Adams. Oh, hold on, let me. Mrs. Adams. Aye. <laughs> to Jeffries. No. And an aye for myself. So four to one that passes. And we will take up the actual date on uh, our Tuesday meeting. I thank everybody for uh, joining us, the town manager, attorney uh, Costa, uh, all the people in the public for, for tuning in on this uh, emergency meeting. Thank you for your time. And we can discuss this further uh, on Tuesday evening. I hope everybody enjoys the rest of their weekend and stay safe, please. I make a motion to adjourn. Thank you. You second. have a second? Second. Second to adjourn? Yes. Second. Okay. Yep. Thank you. All those in favor, Mrs. Luck? Aye. Mr. McQuaid? Aye. Mrs. Adams? Aye. Mr. Jeffries? Aye. And aye for me. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Good night.